So if there's an extra pedial space, so an accessory root is suspected, which is known as radix. And this demands for the mesial or the distal angulated x-rays that you have to take. It is mandatory. You need to take it. Okay. So sometimes many of us can say that this is also an extra root. So we get confused with the double pedial space as well. This mimics, mimics as extra root basically. And this mostly occurs in the mesial side of the mandibular molars where buccal and the lingual convexities of root are seen like double pedial space. So this is basically a double pedial space. This is not an extra root. See, now you need to assess the periapical region. So firstly, crown, then the pulp chamber, then the canal outline, then the root outline, and then the periapical region. So now you need to assess the periapical region. This is where our eyes goes first, basically. In fact, it should go in the last. Okay. So what to see in the periapical region? The character of periapical region. The character of the periapical radiolucency. Like, is it cystic or is it just the abscess? More importantly, the size of the lesion. We obviously check the size of the lesion. It's same. It's, everybody does that. So the most significant is the location of the lesion. See here. The location of the lesion. See here. The location of the lesion. The location of the lesion is very important. See here, the location of the lesion is not in the line of the long axis of the tooth. So what does it indicate? It indicates a lateral canal or accessory canal in that area. The location of the lesion. Sometimes you need to trace the lesion if there is sinus opening. If there is sinus opening in the tooth. And which GP you have to use? You have to use a uh, 30 to 40 sized gutta percha point and it has to be inserted and threaded by rolling it gently between the fingers and as far along the sinus tract as possible. So you can clearly see the cross carious lesion here in this tooth, but the sinus tract from the gutta percha, we traced it on this tooth. So uh, tracing is very important whenever the sinus tract is present. Okay. Um, so I think the pulpal system is done. The periapical system is done. The crown is done. Okay. Now what to do? Now sometimes, yeah, one more thing is there. Yeah. Sometimes what happens? This thing happens. There's a mental foramen and this is incisive foramen. See, mental foramen and incisive foramen are the two things which always mimic the periapical lesion. And changing the horizontal angulation mesially or distally will also change their radiographic location. So we can now visualize the root apex clearly. We need to change the horizontal angulation for them. Sometimes, yeah, uh, uh, that's why a single x-ray, single x-ray can mislead you. You need to have at least two x-rays. So there's a limitation of the periapical radiograph. Okay. So what is the limitation? Basically, periapical radiograph misses the third dimension and gives us only 2D image. We all know. Uh, but most of the time it is enough, you know, most of the time it is enough, but in some scenarios like higher imaging modality, like CBCT is considered, uh, I'm not saying to replace it with the radiographs, but in limited conditions, like what the, what uh, European society of endodontology has suggested the use of CBCTs in these following conditions. Firstly, like evaluation of non-treated canals or root fractures or a resorption or the failure of a surgical endo or whenever there is a complex root canal anatomy, or to confirm the cause of non-odontogenic pathology, or the presence of a periapical pathology, in presence of a contradictory signs and symptoms. Only these are the cases which are suggested by the European Society of Endodontology. Otherwise, we can solely rely on the periapical radiographs. Like C, C-shaped canals. C-shaped canals also comes under peri also comes under a, a complex root canal anatomy, and CBCT is indicated. But still, we can make out a C-shaped canal from a uh, IOPA from a periapical radiograph. See uh, how to get it. How to how to get the idea? These following these following five features we have to see radiographically, and then we can suspect a C-shaped canal. See. there's a radicular fusion of proximity. Radicular fusion of proximity. Can you see here? In here, the, there's a radicular fusion and here there's a proximity of the two roots. Sometimes there is a large distal canal and a small narrow mesial canal. So whenever there's a large distal and a narrow mesial or a radicular fusion or a radicular proximity and a deep chamber, a deep chamber and a larger chamber, see the pulp chamber here, it's small, it's larger here, a deep chamber and 
sometimes a blurred blurred image of third canal in between this also this also appears very frequently and if the instrument if the if we place the instrument it appears to be exiting at the furcation so all are the features of the c shaped canal all these features suspect c shaped canal Huh. See the radiographic appearance of a VRF is dependent on the position of the basically position of the fracture within the root and the degree of the displacement of the fracture. It is actually very difficult uh, to assess from a periapical radiograph until the obvious sign appears. But still, we can somehow make out the VRF cases somehow. Like although CBCT is suggested for VRF, see we need to see these four points. First is visible separation of the root. Uh, in few of the cases, you can see visible separation of the root. Isolated angular crystal bone loss is the chief feature. Is really the chief feature. See here, an angular bone loss, isolated angular crystal bone loss. It occurs at the crest. It occurs at the crest. J-shaped lesion. Can you see the J-shaped lesion? And sometimes the periapical, uh, periradicular radiolucency in the furcation region. So these all are suggestive of a VRF. To summarize, we need we need to have uh, to to get to produce a better quality image. We need to have a DC unit. We need to use flim holders. We need to take uh, one straight, two horizontally angulated, and uh, one bite wing radiograph to assess the restorability. And we uh, take CBCT only when it is required. Otherwise, you will overestimate it, over analysis it. Okay, so this is the roadmap basically. Firstly, the crown, then the pulp chamber, then the root canal, then the root outline, then the periapical region, and then the surrounding things. So in the crown, the most important thing which usually we miss is the location of the pulp horn and the secondary caries. In the pulp chamber, we usually miss the its relation to CEJ. Sometimes it's very deep. So we we uh, if 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 we know the relation of uh, pulp chamber to the CEJ, so we can priorly we can decide how much length above how much length of the burr we should uh, go inside to get the orifices. In root canals, we usually miss the fast break and centrality. In the root outline, we usually gets confused with the double pedial space. And in the periapical region, um, although sometimes it's very obvious that the lesion is there in the tooth, but we don't always place GP in the sinus tract. We should track always whenever there's the sinus tract. Okay. So ignore, and lastly, I would say ignore the absolute confidence of knowing the pre-estimated number of roots and root canals. You should directly start with the roadmap and the approach. You don't have to pre-estimate everything like this tooth has three canals or this tooth have one, one root and I will just start my root canals. You have to ignore this confidence and you just need to uh, spend time uh, analyzing the pre-operative data.